Hello friends, welcome. I am Dr. Harvinder Singh. I am the creator of Psychiatry Education Forum Academy. This is where we post high quality, evidence-based, practice-oriented discussions to improve your clinical decision making. And I am super excited to announce our, our first lecture series for 2023 and the topic is 10 augmentation strategies for major depressive disorder. We all know how clinically relevant this topic is. When you go back to star D trial, we know this. With the first line MDD treatment, not everybody responds. The data shows that only 54% people show response and only one third goes into remission. But when you go to second line, third line, fourth line, the response and remission rate goes down. So this is really important to act urgently uh, in your decision making when you see a person is not responding with the first line treatment. You have two options. You can switch the medication or you can augment it. And the augmentation is what I will discuss. So I have actually made 10 chapters on 10 different medication options for major depressive disorder augmentations. Now, what I have done is, um, these will be published over 10 days for our academy members. I have looked at more than five international guidelines, so I will discuss their recommendation for each medication. I have also discussed studies that these guidelines used to make their recommendation on so you feel confident in knowing why we are choosing one over the other. And then we will go over what dose to use, what side effects to worry about. And I have also compared few medications with each other depending on what data we have available in literature. But the key is, by the time you finish these 10 lectures, you will know what options you have. You will feel confident in choosing these options and feel confident in dis discussing this with your patients and this will improve your clinical decision making. So friends, please check below. I have summarized everything about each chapter. But in few minutes, I will also go over each chapter um, to, to, to let you know what I will be discussing about. If you are not an Academy member, please consider joining our Academy. This is just one lecture series. We have so many chapters, uh, discussions uh, to improve your clinical practice. But if you have any questions for me, please don't hesitate. Send me an email at hsing at psychiatry educationforum.com. So friends, you all take care and bye for now. Thank you. So friends, this is what I will be discussing in 10 chapters. I will go over them quickly, but you can scroll down and read all that as well. Uh, so the first chapter will be published on January 14th and we will discuss about atypical antipsychotics. And this is where we will discuss um, various international guidelines in terms of their recommendation for individual antipsychotics. And then I will compare them with FDA indications. We will go over which one is first line, second line, third line recommendation among atypical antipsychotics. Then I will discuss if low dose antipsychotics can help with major depressive disorder augmentation. Then we'll go over each atypical antipsychotics recommended dose for MDD augmentation. Specifically over cutiapine, we will discuss which formulation is preferred per, per uh, research and guidelines. And then we will compare atypical antipsychotics with lithium. That's when our next chapter on lithium will be published next day on January 15th. Again, I will compare international guidelines recommendations for lithium for MDD augmentation. We will discuss if low dose lithium can help. And then what are the recommended dose of lithium for major depressive disorder augmentation treatment and which 
outcome predictors in patients are considered to be uh, positive for lithium response? And then what is the timeline of response when lithium is added? How early can we see the response? And once the response is seen, how long to continue lithium for? And in the end, I will compare lithium with atypical antipsychotics and the thyroid hormone treatment. That's when our third lecture on the thyroid hormone will be published on January 16th. Again, I will compare various international guidelines recommendation for thyroid hormones. And then we will discuss which one is recommended, T3 or T4. And what is the recommended dose? What is the timeline of response when thyroid uh, treatment is initiated? If there is any role of supraphysiological T4 dose, is this safe? If yes, who is a good candidate? And then we will discuss the dose conversion between thyroid hormone formulations. We will discuss which laboratory monitoring guidelines are needed when you start this treatment. What are the cautions and contraindications with thyroid hormone treatment? And we'll again compare thyroid hormone treatment with atypical antipsychotics and lithium. Now, our fourth chapter will be published on January 20 on L-methylfolate. We will discuss the mechanism of action of L-methylfolate for major depressive disorder treatment. Which patient population will benefit from L-methylfolate augmentation? Importance of knowing drug interactions that can reduce L-methylfolate and what lab work is needed before initiating treatment. What is the recommended dose of L-methylfolate and what is the estimated duration of treatment once patient have shown response to L-methylfolate. This will be our discussion in this one. Moving on to chapter number five, on lamotrigine. This will be published on January 21. Again, I will compare various international guidelines recommendation for this medication. We will discuss which patient population is known to show better response to lamotrigine so that you can choose this over other medications. We will discuss the recommended dose of lamotrigine, how long to continue this for, and we'll compare lamotrigine with lithium for MDD augmentation. Then we will go to our next chapter number six on stimulants. This will be published on January 22nd. We will compare the international guidelines recommendations on this, which patient population will show better response, and what is the recommended dose for stimulants. So this will include many other medications, but I will go over that when I discuss this chapter. And then on January 23rd, we will publish our seventh chapter on Buspiron. We will again discuss the international guidelines recommendations for Buspiron as an augmentation strategy. We will discuss which patient population will show better response to Buspiron. And what is the recommended dose for Buspiron? We will compare Buspiron with Bupropion. And then I will discuss this study published from STAR-D trial comparing Buspiron with the cognitive therapy as a second-line treatment for MDD augmentation. Then we will go to our eighth chapter on January 27th on Pramipaxol. We will discuss the mechanism of action for this medication, which patient population is a good con candidate, what is the recommended dose for both adults and elderly patients, what is the onset of response when you start this medicine, like how early can you see the response, and what are the common side effects with this treatment. Then we will go to our ninth chapter on S. adenosyl methionine, SAM E. This will be published on January 28. We will discuss the mechanism of action. Is SAM E preferred over antidepressants? We will discuss that. And which patient population will benefit from this option? And when you use it, 
what is the recommended dose of SAMe? And then we will discuss if any guideline talks about this as an option and what line they recommend this for. And in the end, friends, we will finish this with our last 10th chapter on January 29 on low dose naltrexone. First, I will discuss what is the definition of that? How is this different from naltrexone? What is the mechanism of action for low dose naltrexone for depression? What is the recommended dose you need to use? But what side effects and cautions you need to be mindful of? And in the end, I will discuss one of the important articles published on this topic. So friends, this will be our discussion. Please read below for more details as well.